What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over a much needed and highly requested follower guide for Diablo 3 season 28. So we're gonna go over everything that you need to do to equip your followers, why they're so important, and why you need to have them when you're playing the game. So first things first is, what is a follower? A follower is a companion that you can have in Diablo 3 when you're playing solo. You cannot have a follower when you're playing in any kind of group play, even if you add one person. It's gonna go away if you do. Followers are a very powerful companion that you can have when you're playing in solo play. They're gonna give you ability buffs, skill buffs, they're gonna give you cooldown reduction, healing, all these really powerful things in the game that kind of help you give that little extra push when you're playing the game, whether you're doing greater rift pushing, speed GRs, you're doing all your T16 content. They give you a lot of benefits to using followers, so I always recommend doing it, okay? In the past, we have not had the Eminence ability, or Eminates, they did add this uh, down the road a few seasons ago, and I think it was a huge thing. So if you don't know, Eminates on a, in a particular item allows you to have the ability even if your character is not wearing it. So in the past, we used to have to wear Nemesis Bracers to spawn enemy champions because our followers, you could put them on there, but it didn't matter. So now emanating means that the uh, gear piece ability will emanate to us. So when we do it, it happens. So when we strike a pylon, it spawns enemy champions, boom, and we're good to go. So Eminates is a very, very powerful thing. So when it comes to gearing our guys with the Eminates ability, there's gonna be some gear pieces that pretty much don't change on any of the followers. That's gonna be our flavor of time for pylon effects to last twice as long. Nemesis Bracer, so we always spawn enemy champions at a pylon. Gloves of Worship, so shrine effects last for 10 minutes. Homing pads, so we get the tele, uh, the town portal bubble, so we can't be hurt. Um, those are the four main ones that you're going to have on pretty much every single build. Uh, and then Oculus Ring is another piece that is mainly on almost every build, as well as Avarice Band. Now, one thing I do want to mention with every single follower in the game, they all have their stat priorities here. So you have Templar with Strength, Scoundrel for Dex, and Enchantress for Intelligence. All of their abilities scale with their main stat, meaning if you max this to 25,000 or higher, any abilities here that have a percentage based on strength or their main stat will be maxed out. So for example, I'm gonna show you on the Enchantress and we'll go over that once we actually get to her. But the Enchantress has a reduced skill down or your skill cooldowns by 9.3%. That's because I do not have my intelligence maxed. Once my intelligence is at 25,000, this will be a maxed out 10% cooldown reduction. So I definitely advise when you are gonna be gearing your characters to get the get their main stat to 25,000 so you get the maximum benefit between each character. Uh, now that we got the gear covered, guys, let's get into each individual follower, why they're important and why we have them geared up uh, this particular way. So starting with the Templar, the Templar is a melee-based character the main reason that you run the Templar is for greater rift pushing. The reason that we have him is because he benefits your character by healing a lot. Okay, he's going to heal your character throughout the entire duration of doing greater rifts. And more importantly, he is the only follower that benefits from having cooldown, which is why we are doing the Captain Crimson set on the Templar, because he gets that amazing cooldown reduction, which allows him to pop his abilities more often, which is good for us, because when we're greater rift pushing, we're gonna get hurt. So him healing us is very, very important. Now, each follower does have a relic, and depending on what we're doing, uh, we're gonna swap this for either they cannot die or have access to all skills. With the Templar, you're gonna have the follower cannot die because we do not care about our follower doing any kind of damage or survivability because he can't die. So when it comes to the abilities for the Templar, for greater rip pushing, we're rocking heal so he can heal you, loyalty, which regenerates life, and then we have Onslaught, which gives us 10% more damage. And then we have Guardian for Cheat Death. Every follower is going to have a Cheat Death, which you can have for your character. And we, we apply it in almost every single follower. Sometimes we rock the other ability, like Resource Generation here with Inspire. But we pretty much always want the Cheat Death. It's free, so why not use it? Now, over the gear pieces, besides the ones that we named earlier, guys, we have the Captain Crimson's for the cooldown reduction for the character ice climber so they can never be frozen or immobilized we have a sword here you can pretty much use almost any weapon or shield there's some that are a little bit better for as far as stat priorities but 
We want as much cooldown on the character as possible. We have Avarice Band here for uh, T16 if you want to use him, but Oculus Ring is more important for our extra damage here. And then of course the, the main four here. I like the Broken Crown for T16 when it comes to gem drops, but for GR pushing this needs to be Leoric's Crown. And then Talrosh's Relentless Pursuit is very good for the attack speed and life. So that is the Templar guys, very, very powerful character, uh, especially for a Greater Rift pushing. Uh, more particularly the melee characters. Now let's go over Scoundrel. Scoundrel is our dex-based ranged character. The Scoundrel really, really benefits from doing critical hit chance, which is why we would use him in Greater Rift pushing. Uh, he is very good at giving us more ranged attack speed, crit hit chance, we're doing stuff that pierces and we have more damage done to enemies, and then of course, cheat death. So let's go over the gear and everything that you need uh, for this character. As you can see, we already got Nemesis Braces, Flavor of Time, Clubs of Worship, and the homie pads. We have a uh, Leorx crown here for the extra um, EXP gains. Then we have gold skin. This can be swapped out. Uh, the belt um, is very good to create a chaos feel, which binds the slow enemies. This is also very good. We have the Kane's uh, pants here because we're not doing greater rift keys. We have ice climber so that way we can he cannot be immobilized, which is great. And then we got a bow to rock. Um, so that is the gear pieces for the scoundrel. The scoundrel is really, really good with the critical hit chance, guys. So for greater rift pushing, especially with dexterity based characters, and more particularly the demon hunter, really benefits from the crit chance. So I would definitely rock the scoundrel if you are doing greater rift pushing with those kinds of characters. All right, now let's get over to the Enchantress, which is one of my favorite followers, and I pretty much use her for everything. So going over the Enchantress, the reason that you would take the Enchantress is the, the Harmony skill, which gives you cooldown reduction up to 10%. We went over that earlier, getting your main stat max, so that way we get the maximum benefit from the skills. The Enchantress is going to be the main follower that you use for all T16, uh, normal rifts, and all of your bounties, okay? and the empowered shield here which reduces six percent damage from range you get increased armor and slows melee attackers down which is very very important so those are the two main skills that we have we take temporal pulse just as a formality one of these abilities doesn't really matter just take temporal pulse uh, pulse for just a little bit more damage and then of course fate's laps for the cheat death the Enchantress is so good with the cooldowns because you're just doing all speed content. You can use her for speed GRs because you want the cooldown to keep your skills proc'd. So she is very, very good for speed GRs. I still like the Scoundrel for just more crit chance, but if you have issues with cooldown, take the uh, Enchantress. So over the gear, of course we have the, the Follower Cannot Die. Although with T16, this is the only time I would really uh, take the chance to use the um, focus that gives you access to all skills which is very, very good. You can benefit from the additional skills like the uh, elemental damage bonus, the conjures of pool that deals weapon damage over time, and then focus mind gives you an aura. But you're gonna be moving so fast that I don't think the other skills really matter. So I'd rather just keep her alive. Of course, in our gear pieces, guys, we got Nemesis Bracers, Flavor of Time, Gloves of Worship, uh, and then Homing Pads. Next, we have Broken Crown, because we're doing T16. I like the additional gem drops. Although if you want more EXP, go with Louis York's Crown. We got gold skin with the emanates, chance for uh, an enemy to drop gold. This combined with Avarice Band is, is what's going to help us stay alive with our T16 and make us invincible as long as you have gold wrap. And then, of course, Ring of Royal Grandor because we are rocking the Kane set and or the Sages set. This is another huge bonus to doing T16s. If you wanted to swap out Gloves of Worship because you aren't going to have Shrine effects that last for 10 minutes, I suggest putting the Sages Gloves on here for double death breaths. Now, the main thing that you want on the Enchantress is the Cane Set. The reason for the Cane Set is because we get a 25% chance for an extra uh, Greater Rift Keystone to drop when we're doing normal rifts. You can see the, the, the difficulty overview uh, chart that we have on the screen right now, guys. If you follow the Greater Rift Key drop all the way over to T16, you are guaranteed three Greater Rifts every single time you complete a normal rift, and a fourth one is a 50% chance. So with that, every time a, a Greater Rift Keystone drops, we have another 25% chance to get one. So we have a chance to get six Greater Rift Keystones every single time we do a normal Rift. You're not always going to get it, but this is huge for Greater Rift Keystone farming. Now, one extra tip and trick. If you wanted to 
if you're low on these you know gear pieces you you don't have them ancient and you don't have a way to get this all the way to 25 percent there is a way to kind of uh cheese it to a degree i'm gonna go over here and show you guys why you can cheese it this way and it's uh just very important so you can take the guardian set right you can take guardians and you can cheese it on your follower so if we take guardians now we have 29,000 intelligence, which gives us our maximum cooldown reduction. So if you are having issues, you don't have ancient items, you don't have the max, you know, roll of the main stat on the gear pieces, which is is fine, it can happen. If you kind of want to cheese it to help push that over the limit, take the guardian set on your follower to give them the maximum uh, main stat cooldown. It's a little cheat, a little cheese there. Because you see, we went from 21,000 to 29,000, so we gained 8,000 intelligence. So it definitely is a way to cheese it. Just make sure you're not swapping out these main pieces here um, for your followers. That, guys, is the ultimate follower guide. I really do hope that it helped you. Make sure to like the video if you have enjoyed it. Uh, let me know down in the comments which follower you like to use and do you have them all geared up. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.